So carbon dioxide is widely accepted as um, the the main um, driver of climate change, man-made carbon dioxide that is, and consequently um, the majority of the nations um, around the, the world have plans in place to try and reduce the amount of carbon dioxide um, that they're producing as a nation to try and limit that impact on climate change. Um, but I'm um, going to be taking a UK-centric uh, viewpoint of uh, these commitments um, to, to um, manage climate change. Obviously, the UK's um, commitment is um, aligned with the European um, commitments as well, and also, um, and so I'll talk a bit about a bit about that. Okay, so I'm just going to give a brief timeline of the UK uh, climate change sort of legislation history. So it started um, fairly recently in 1997 when the UK signed the Kyoto Protocol. And they agreed to, to a 12.5% decrease in carbon dioxide um, emissions based on 1990 levels. So it should be said, actually, 1990 was kind of set as this date. Um, so it's kind of target to reduce um, the, you know, our carbon, di- carbon dioxide levels back to. And so the, this these targets were agreed and um, they, they aim to meet them by uh, 2012. In 2005, that Kyoto Protocol came into force, and what this kind of led on to was um, the 2008 uh, UK uh, Climate Change Act. Now, this is an act, so, um, you know, it's uh, law. It allows the UK government to actually introduce measures to reduce um, uh, carbon dioxide um, produced from the UK. And in fact, they went a step further. They, um, they introduced measures to have a 80 percent decrease 1990 levels um by um 2050 so very going well and above what was demanded of them um in the Kyoto protocol um so in 2012 the uk did meet its target in fact it exceeded its target so it had a 12 target of a 12 and a half percent reduction and actually reduced it by 18 and a half percent um and that's uh, between um 1990 and 2012 so based on those 1990 levels. And in the same year, um, signed up to a second Kyoto pr- uh, commitment to reduce carbon dioxide levels by 19% by 2020. Um, but already we've got this overriding um, self-imposed um, uh, target of 80% reduction by 2050. So then a few years ago, the UK signed the Paris Agreement um, along with um a majority you know quite a few countries around the world um to to keep the temperature below two degrees and target one and a half degree rise um so instead of setting hard and fast limits on the amount of carbon dioxide that's be allowed they've decided to go for this temperature target um which is really what's the um uh the main consequence of increasing co2 levels is the temperature in the atmosphere which then has these knock-on and runaway effects. So it's really the temperature you want to target, and um, not just the, it, but the reducing the carbon dioxide away of, is a way of achieving that. So um, as a result of the Paris Agreement, the UK isn't going to set any new emission targets now. That's because we already have this target in place of reducing it 80% by 2050. Um, but what the Paris Agreement allows us to give have is a five-year review um, of what this targets and it gives us the opportunity to monitor and this kind of curious um, phrase that there's uh, it allows us to vigorously vigorously pursue the measures uh, to deliver on existing commitments and go further so the, the framework in the Paris Agreement it, um, there's nothing kind of legally binding for an individual nation but collectively um, we're setting these targets to try and reduce the the um, the, war- the temperature that the the Earth's surface or the Earth's atmosphere is increasing by. The other thing it also sets out is a strategy, and we'll talk about this in more detail later, for developing options to remove greenhouse gases uh, from the air. Okay, so why do we need such aggressive reductions in the eighty percent target? Well. 
if we if this is a CO2 concentration in the atmosphere and this is time obviously it started increasing um, as, um, as we're becoming more industrialized and if we want this to plateau out um, or to stop increasing then if this is kind of the cumulative then this is your kind of almost um, production is what you want so this ramped up very quickly so if we want it to plateau then we very aggressively need to reduce um, the amount that we're producing so bring it back as I said the UK's commitment is to reduce that by 80 percent um, and bring it right back down so this plateaus or stops increasing now the UK um, since 1990 has actually done compared to 1990s done very well actually um, if you look on this graph you can see that um, the the last set of figures released um, or 2016's figures showed that we'd reduced our carbon dioxide um, by 40 percent compared to 1990 levels to 1990s the baseline at 100 percent we're here below um, 60 so it's 40 percent reduction and this is in contrast to um, increasing productivity so you would expect your carbon dioxide um, emissions to go down if you're if you weren't as productive as a nation but um, this is good news for the UK in that our productivity has gone up but our um, also our greenhouse um, gas emissions have gone down um, which is you know good news for for going forward so that's where we are now um, we kind of reduced it by 40 percent which is good but that's not our target is to get down to 80 percent so this is how we're going to do that well you can see on here the way that we're going to do it is quite aggressive uh, legislation so we're going to set ourselves carbon budgets um, which will put us on the path to reducing um, our co2 emissions down to this 80 percent reduction in here there is an allowance for um, ais which is international um, aviation and shipping um, there were some carbon dioxide emissions that we don't have control over um, if a plane flies into our airspace obviously that's subject to um, kind of international leg uh, legislation our own legislation so it's hard to to legislate against that so there's so allowance for um, uh, UK emissions that we don't have any control over okay so um, up till now we've been predominantly doing this okay so we we dig up the fossil fuels we burn them and the carbon ends up in the atmosphere atmosphere so this is a carbon flow this is um what's called carbon positive so we're positively putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere ideally what we want is this so uh we use bioenergy so we extract um carbon dioxide from the atmosphere oh well the, the trees and plants do um so using photosynthesis they um, take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere release oxygen and store the carbon we could then burn that to extract energy from that and put the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere um, this is carbon neutral so the amount of carbon dioxide that we're taking out of the atmosphere is exactly the same, same amount that we're uh, returning to the atmosphere so it, the interim step is to do something like this so return some or not return but let me rephrase that um, not release and all the carbon that we're burning into the atmosphere and the way we do this is with um, ccs carbon capture and storage and i'll talk about that um, in more detail um, in the next section so this is still carbon positive we're um, still releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere but just not as much as if we completely burn it alone we're, we're not allowing it all to get into the atmosphere as i said i'll talk about this in more detail but we can go one step further than that this um, process if we start using bioenergy combined with carbon capture and storage then what we've got here is this is carbon negative we're actually removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because we, the the plants and trees are capturing the carbon and when we burn it we're we're not releasing all of it back to the atmosphere so this is a uh, carbon ne negative and looking like the way we're going to have to go if we want to really meet those targets uh, those um, harsh targets that we've imposed for ourselves 